Chiron. I knew you'd come. I knew you'd get yourself into trouble. <laughs> you need help right away. No. Get father. I'll wait here. Calandra, listen to me. Uh, don't. We're both wounded. You might mix our blood. Father and his cursed rules. If I don't bind your wounds immediately, you'll die. Please, Chiron. We don't know what will happen. Hold still. Or was it worth it? Just to delay the wedding? And with this man... Chiron! Don't be such an idiot. So it had nothing to do with the wedding? It's about all these people. That man kidnapped them. I think he wants to... Oh, that would be so terrible. We must save them. Then hold still! What was that? Something's... different. Do you feel it too? We can think about that later, if we survive or whatever that is. You hold the fort. I'll watch your back. Can you fight? I'm tougher than you think. And after that, whatever it was, the bleeding stopped. And take this potion. You're more likely to need it than I. You've got a healing potion? I didn't take it because I thought that the monsters had trampled the bottle when they tore off my bag. You're lucky I didn't have time to crawl over there earlier. Why didn't you tell me about the healing potion? Do you really want to discuss that now? Forget it. How did you do that? You just cut down a servant of the Netherhells, and we're both still alive. If I hadn't saved you, there'd be no wedding. No wedding, no wedding feast. <laughs> You're a fool. But seriously, that was more than just the courage of despair. It was... magic. Magic? Because my blood mixed with your blood? How could our blood have such an effect? I only know of magicians who perform magic with their blood. The Borberadians. Father has hated them ever since we were children. Remember how he always used to curse them when he was drunk? You mean that's the reason for the eternal prohibitions and the secretiveness? That dog has known it all these years. He loves us. We know that. Why wouldn't he tell us about something so important? He's gonna have a few questions to answer when we get back. This man, you didn't leave with him because of that. I mean, to prevent the marriage with his help. Have you nothing better to do than worry about my virginity? I am your brother. And that is the only reason why you're not getting your ears pinned back. But just to reassure you, you and Father can sleep peacefully in the knowledge that the little sweet rose Calandra has not been picked before her marriage. That is all I wanted to know. What is the kidnapper up to? And what do you have to do with it? At first I thought he was an interesting guy. I really misjudged that one. I saw him, last night, near our tent with a little girl. His hands, his face covered in blood. I have no idea how old that girl was. Maybe twelve? She cried and begged for mercy as he dragged her off. I snuck along behind him to kill him when the time was right. On the way here, he just knocked a woman down and took her with him. Last night? It's already getting light out there. Next time I'll wait until you're awake too. But I lost his trail on Moloch Mountain. The beasts here all avoided him like the plague and attacked me instead. So come on! We have to stop him before he does something to those two! Time is running out. If we want to free the prisoners, we have to hurry. One more thing. I found this on one of the corpses here. A deed to a house in the East Quarter? I knew the dead man. His name was Praedon Karstig, a fishmonger from Mendina who somehow got citizenship here. Something here has disfigured him horribly. 
We should really return the deed to his family. You do it. You knew him. We're not going to enrich ourselves at that family's expense. You know what father would say. Chiron, we really could use that money to survive. Yes, father, but I am not going to tell you that for once I thought of others. Son, you're much too decent. One day you'll throw yourself into a yawning abyss on someone else's behalf. And just to spite you, I'll do it gladly. Fine. Then let's get a move on. The kidnapper awaits. Fresh blood. We found them. I can't find a lock or any kind of mechanism. Still, there must be a way to open this door somehow. Is anyone there? Behind the door. Those must be the prisoners. Oh, the gods help us. Help us before he returns. How many of you in there? Are you alright? There's seven. He performed this ritual on us. So much blood. So much blood. We're not going to be able to open this door. We will have to force the kidnapper to release them. If he comes back, he'll eat us all! Eat! He will pay for this. We'll be back soon to free you. Hang on! No! Don't leave us in here! Please, don't! The Dragolich Razazor's Golden Pyramid. Impressive that so much of it is still standing. Again, fresh bloodstains. We're on the right track. This gate is even more massive than that door earlier. We need to find out how to open it. Maybe there's a switch or something. Strange design. Maybe it could be used to open the pyramid. Or the metal door in the hallway. Are you going to be able to do that? Shouldn't be too hard to handle. Have a look around. Maybe you can still find something interesting. How much longer? Ah! Oh, shit! Let's get out of here! I'm gonna chop your head off so you never eat again. Are you alright? I was burned, bitten, and paralyzed. But I'm still a virgin, so I guess everything's in order. Kill him. He should suffer the same way the people he's eaten did. If that's what you want, then put an end to it, and do it quickly. But know that all those whom I have already collected will die with me. We're gonna open that door. I'm interested to see if it's harder than your head. My supplies are bound to me by blood magic. I prefer them living. I am the only one who can release them. I can do that if you let me go. But if I die, they will die a slow and painful death. And don't even think of trying to capture me. I will leave this place a free man or a dead one. You can't ask us to decide that. I do what I please. So... Do we negotiate? What should we do with him? It could have been so easy. Kill the villain, save the innocent, and bask in the glory. Instead, we have to decide between letting all these people die, or letting a cannibal go free. In the end, there is no right or wrong here. 
only the decision and its consequences. Why did you do it? What did you think it would bring you? Many years ago, I discovered the teachings of Saint Borbarad. Everyone is a magician, if they are only strong enough to free themselves from the yoke of their conscience. This is Barbarad's promise. His teachings open the sway of my willpower to me. The blood opens doors through which only the best can pass. What? You have to eat other people to do blood magic? The real power isn't in the blood. The real power is in the flesh. I was the first to recognize that. And I will therefore triumph over all those too blind to see. What value the life of a weakling, when its sacrifice can increase the might of the strong? Your blood magic binds your prisoners to you. Disgusting, but still just ordinary magic. It is my spell, fed from my blood. You are too weak to break it. And why shouldn't other magic be able to break that bond? If your spell is so powerful, why should I believe you can even break it yourself to free your prisoners? Because you don't have a choice. Now run him through! I know what I have to do. You'll never eat again. Go to hell! Karen's blade slid into the cannibal's body with a moist, visceral sucking sound and dark blood gushed onto the ground. The man-eater was vanquished. The day Some hungry people tried to beat me up. Could have ended bloodily, so I talked some sense into them. My Chiron, a good soul through and through. Maybe I'll stay here with you and not get married. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. What if the wedding ring suddenly disappears? Or even the virgin bride herself? Nice idea. But if you want to run away again, pick somewhere better than Moloch Mountain. That'll make it easier to bring you back. <laughs> it was so charming there. Funny. Chiron. Listen to me. That magic in Moloch Mountain, I think... I think it woke something in me. We've both somehow learned to do magic. Yes. Maybe we're mages. It's often detected late. No, that's, that's not what I mean. What do you mean, then? Come on, I... What is it? What? Why? At least once. I had to do that at least once before I married Falk. It was... wonderful. That was the plan, you know. And now? Well, no one's watching. Chiron! It's not funny! This should be something special. I'm not some peasant girl happy for a role in the hay. No, just a refugee girl who doesn't worry too much about blood relationships. If I have to do something forbidden, then it should at least be worth it. That's what my brother taught me. You must not marry him. We are leaving, both of us. We sell your wedding ring and leave father some gold here. I'm afraid it won't be that easy. The wedding ring's gone. It's gone? Someone took it from our tent when we were in Moloch Mountain. I discovered the theft just this morning. The ring was everything we had left, and it was hidden well. The thief must have known exactly where to look. The smuggler who sold us the ring. He probably gave the thief a hint. That's why he ran off so quickly. We won't find him, but the thief might still be in Warunk. Can you find out who stole it? Can you get it back? And I'll search for this smuggler. Let's see how fast he'll run in the end. Have fun, ferocious one. Chiron, did you have any luck? Yes. Now you can just go get yourself all prettied up for Mr. Bridegroom.
come on, it's not that bad. Maybe I can cheer you up. Do you remember the deed we found in Moloch Mountain? While seeking the smuggler, I ran into Pred and Casting's wife. Her children were so happy when they got the deed to their house back. They even gave me a couple of herrings as thanks, but I bartered them for something that smells better. Here is your share. Let's say it's a little token of gratitude for my saviour. Falk, he'll be in here soon. Kyron, I can't marry him. I know that now. Whatever you may think about us, you and me, please help me. So we're leaving Wurunk, you and I, now. And father? We can't. There must be another way to get citizenship. Rondra, smile upon you, your grace. Please, Karin, help me. Help us. Galandra, my lovely, how are you? Greetings, Karin. I'm all right. Ah, I see the feast is ready. Excellent. Excellent. A family must stick together. Right, Calandra? Yes, family. Then may I introduce to you my beloved mother. Greetings, my dear. Oh, and this young beauty just has to be little Calandra, am I right? I am pleased to make your acquaintance, highborn lady. Are you excited? Yes, I would be too. Once you bloom, you will have powers at your command, the likes of which you can now only imagine. I don't quite understand, dear lady. The love, the power. You're still just a girl. But soon you will realize what opportunities open up to you once you've become a woman. As an expert recognizes the inner workings of the stars in order to make use of them, so too will your soul one day rise to the greatest of heights. I'm afraid I still don't quite follow you. Then uh, tell me one thing. Would you pay blood for a precious gem or love for a pebble? I, I think I... I do not know. My, but how pretty you are, little Commander. We will meet again soon. I am not listening to any more of this! Chiron, this woman is mad, and this wedding is nothing but a lie! Such anger, such power. Of course I understand you, Chiron. It is not easy to let one's own sister go. You! You know, a woman would do you good too. Why don't you take this pass and try your luck in the city? And take some coins. A reward for your reliability. I won't let him have you. Falk of Aravor! You will fall by my hand if need be! Kyron, please! Calandra, father, are you alright? We're doing fine, Kyron. This hut won't take this for long. With you here, we can try and break out. What the hell's happened? The attack came suddenly. We were lucky that we rescued the others. Lucky is an understatement. Right now, they're shredding everything alive out there. The undead are coming from all directions. Then there must be several sources, summoning circles, necromancers work. We need to head for the Prios Temple. It's easiest to defend. Consecrated ground. If we're lucky, the Sun God's blessing will stop the undead. Let's go. Alone? And what about the people here? They're refugees too, just like us. We no longer belong to these people. What do you mean? We have our citizenship. We can enter the city. I... I don't have to marry him. This is not the time. Let's go. The undead could attack at any moment. We have to go. I will not leave these people here. I don't want the blood of any more innocents on my hands. And not on your hands either, Chiron. Chiron, go ahead. You hack your way through the worst of it and we'll follow with the refugees. From one summoning circle to the next, if I catch a necromancer, I destroy his circle and you follow. 
It's the tougher path, but there's less danger if we meet them head-on than in having them follow us. Let's go. What have you found? A severed hand. Leftovers from the storming of the armory. Severed body parts as a sacrifice for the invocation of a demon. The only one who really comes into question is Thalgunitoth, archdemon of the undead. The Dark Mother. Stop it, both of you. Anyone naming names is playing with their soul. As if that ever stopped you, Father. This is something else, Calandra. You don't understand. Don't think for a minute that you can keep fobbing me off with that old line. Right, let's keep moving. We still haven't caught all the necromancers. You found something? A piece of amber. A sacred stone of the Sangar Prios. Black Arras. Definitely the Lord of Vengeance. He's the only one anyone would offer up a piece of amber to in order to facilitate the invocation. You mean the Sun God Prius's nemesis? What would he have to do with summoning undead? Maybe that explains why they were able to attack during the day without turning to dust. <sighs> the light shunning rabble. Don't be silly. This just doesn't fit. We'll need to find the mastermind if we want to know more. If Black Arras is involved, someone is out for revenge. But when he starts summoning undead at the same time, he's out to divert attention from something else. Something bigger. Oh, then it has to be a Borberadian father. With them, nothing is ever the way it seems. Find that funny, do you? You find that funny, you silly fool? Come, father, calm down. We need to get going. Now, if we find him and he really is a Borberadian, you can have the finishing blow. You are fools, children. Happy fools. What the hell's happened here? One less necromancer, one more demonic sacrifice. An executioner's sword with a lioness coat of arms on it. A Rondrian weapon as an offering in an undead summoning. That's strange. The war goddess's demonic opponents have nothing to do with revenants. Right. That summoning must have been directed at some other demon than the archdemon Thargunitoth. The undead have been called independently of this summoning. Besides Rondra's nemesis Belhalha, I'd say Black Arras, the Lord of Vengeance, would probably be a good guess. Executioner Saws are often sacrificed to him. How come you know so much about demons? You picked these things up over the years. Chiron, weren't you in a hurry? There's still a good way to the Prios Temple. The villain's escape left many questions unanswered. Who summoned them? What did he want to achieve? Why did Falk, a senior Rondrian, allow Chiron to face the summoner? Instead of replying, Falk ordered the Rondrians to seal off the refugee camp and comb it in search of the summoner there, using whatever means necessary. He quartered his bride Calandra and her family in the old pillory, the best guest house on the square. At least now, with the approaching wedding, his thoughts seemed to focus on Calandra's welfare. At least, that was the impression he gave. Stop eavesdropping, Chiron. What is said in the next room is none of your business. Falk is talking to his mother, probably planning his next crime, the bastard. Enough! We all realize that you can't stand them. Not even you like those two, father. We could see the way you stared at Falk's mother. You had better get used to them. I'm not going to do it, father. We have citizenship. We no longer need them. You will marry Falk, and you will move with him when his church transfers him. I go where I want, and I'll marry the man I love. Bite your tongue, Calandra. You don't even know what you're saying. Never, ever talk to us like that again. Otherwise, you will find yourself sitting there all alone in the morning with your damn citizenship. You're a stubborn, rebellious idiot, Chiron. Stop inciting your sister like that. Father, I love Chiron. You... you don't know what you're saying. And I love her. Children, you're running to your doom. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. I thought that maybe little Calandra 
would give me some advice on how we can make the wedding particularly tasteful. The old Rondra temple is such an austere, dreary building, and it would be a shame if our tastes were all too different. Certainly. She will come with you. Father. My dear Chiron, it is really touching to see how much you worry about your little sister. But I think she should decide for herself, don't you, Bian Bahaladan? I will come. Excellent, excellent. We will host a celebration such as Warrunk has never seen. Come along. And it goes without saying that the anxious brother can join us later at the temple. Fare you well, gentlemen. You hit her. My wife will be silent when I demand it. That's enough! Chiron, drop it! That's right, my love. It would be a shame if my dear brother-in-law were forced to watch our wedding from the scaffold. Man to man, Chiron will chop you into bloody little pieces. It will be my pleasure. When the time is ripe. Men, march! Didn't you defend yourself? It's not as bad as it looks. His mother jumped in between us before it got ugly. What did you do in the temple? Wedding preparations in the temple, and some kind of test on me. On you? Chiron, there are more important things at the moment. Please listen to me. Fultz's mother seems to like me a lot. I was able to ask her a great many questions, and she talked like a disciple of Namdus. Fulk struck me to stop me from asking questions. She already knows much too much, he said. And he was right. This test, it has something to do with our magic powers? Fulk's mother knows something about them, I'm sure. My gift was the reason for the test. When our blood mingled, it seemed to have awoken something. Well, this just can't be true. Father warns us for years not to mix our blood, but never tells us why. Then some masked elf comes along, and all of a sudden you somehow have to marry the man who pretends to be her son. And when our blood accidentally does mix, awakening some sort of magical powers in us, then guess which same elf has an answer. An answer she hasn't given me. Just a lot of solemn talk about the power of blood and pain. And that right after Fulk can beat me bloody. Very appropriate. I'm going to talk to Father. He has to stop lying to us. As long as you don't beat him to a pulp, too. What did Falk's mother check you for? I think it was some kind of magic test. She wasn't much interested in my virginity, at any rate. Not much? In the end, she said it had already begun. And then? Nothing more. She just smiled and talked quite excitedly about the wedding. And about freedom, power, and ecstasy. Folks stood next to her drooling. It was disgusting. That woman is really strange. Did you see her pointy ears? I don't think that she's his mother. Rather something like his... master. And right now she's none too happy with her student. She called him a failure. Because it's unworthy of a Rondrian to lose patience? No. He must have made some mistake first. I'm not sure, but it sounded as if he endangered some kind of cover-up. After he hit me, she hissed at him. Fool! Now it has begun anyway, she said. Maybe it has something to do with the refugee camp, the necromancer's escape, or the fact that I defeated him. Or our magic gifts. I don't know. Calandra, let's get out of here. Father has his citizenship, so he'll be fine. There is no reason to marry that pig anymore. There are three reasons why I should stay here and pretend like I'm actually going to marry Falk. Firstly, that necromancer is still running around free. He killed off half the refugee camp, and, if I understood you properly earlier, all the signs point to my groom. Secondly, Falk's mother is the only one who can tell us anything about these strange magical gifts. I just can't believe that Father would break his silence after all these years. And thirdly? Thirdly, I know now that you love me, more than a man loves his sister. Even if these people kidnapped me and locked me up somewhere in the mountains, I know you would come to my rescue. So we need not fear. 
I won't stand around here and wait until the wedding begins. I want to kill that invocator. Wait. I found out something else that might help you. Falks' mother talked a lot about the god Nandus' sons, Demon Master Borborad and Rohal the Wise. Heresy in the old Rondra temple? Unbelievable to think that the Rondrians would tolerate such a thing. Except for Falk, there weren't any of them in the area when she talked about it. She mentioned a Council of the Dead, Borborad's Council of the Dead. It's supposed to be here in Mollock Mountain. Father once spoke of it. We were very young, he had been drinking and was cursing the Borboradians. Upon his return from the grave, the Demon Master summoned the souls of the greatest scholars from Boron's underworld. He banished them into three troll skulls, which had to answer all of Borborad's questions. Whenever they refused, they were plunged into terrible agonies. I remember. Father said that the skulls only answer Borborad himself, him or his official successor. Borborad appointed a successor? If he wanted to ensure that his church would continue to exist after his death, he would have had to. Maybe there isn't an official successor. Then the Skulls would have to answer everyone. Or no one. It would be worth a try. If I understood Fultz's mother correctly, the Council of the Dead is somewhere in Moloch Mountain. This could be our chance. If the Council of the Dead knows the answer to everything, you could ask it anything. About the undead, the necromancer, maybe the Council even knows what other lies our father told us. So back to Moloch Mountain. Oh, this could be fun. <laughs> but it's so nice that you're doing it anyway. What is this? What's going on here? Azariel. I was afraid you'd never figure it out. No wedding. Adjoining in the master's name. Surrounded by his servants. Nothing new to you. Calandra, I will be right with you. Don't do it. You're playing right into her hands. My compliments, by the way. Your education has been exemplary. I've almost convinced her. Calandra, whatever she offers you, don't accept. And she's even a virgin. Too bad I can't use that anymore. The awakening has already begun. You filthy demon whore! Keep your hands off her! Maybe I'll give her to Falk, as a little incentive. He can't always fail the way he did in the Prior's Temple. Enough said to the nether hells with you! Falk, stop! I'll do it! But please let them live! You will not regret it, child. Just say the words. From this day on, will blood wake blood? You don't know what you're doing, Calandra! Silence, cripple! So, Borborad, take my soul. May it rest gently in your hands. You take my soul! Let them go! Dear Chiron, your soul is worth less than hers. Go on, Calandra. Freedom through pain. Power through will. Every human, a mage. Excellent. Simply excellent. You promised! Of course, my child. Your loved ones are safe. So now we can both begin your journey of discovery and knowledge. But the wedding, mother. What shall I tell the Warunkians and the Rondrians? You do not have your gift under control. You have shed Calandra's blood. Your necromancer did not finish his work. You had your chance and you failed. She will never obey you, Azaril. She is smarter than I was then. Folk, lock these two up. Your life depends on their safety. I'll find you, Azarel. I can't wait, my dear Chiron. I can't wait. No more secrets. You're right. You were right from the start. I'm sorry, Chiron. So, ask. Who is Azaril? Azaril, High Prophetess of Borborad, the Demon Master. She is the head of the Church of Borborad. What does she want from us? Why did she kidnap Calandra? And what do you have to do with it? 
You know we spent all those years fleeing through the Shadowlands, from one hiding place to another, constantly in fear of the Borberadians. We weren't randomly pursued, Chiron. We fled Azaril's minions, who were out to capture us, me, and the two of you. All those years? Why? To get revenge. Before you were born, I was a Borberadian myself. I served Azaril with all my... I was her loyal servant, but then I betrayed her, betrayed and robbed her. Why? For Calandra and for you. All this effort, the wedding, the infiltration of Rondrians, all because of Calandra? Chiron, Calandra is not just anyone. You're not just anyone either. What do you mean? Azaril chose you both. You and five other children. You seven were not born like other children. You came into the world as part of a ritual in which Azaril summoned a powerful demon. This demon was to provide you with vast powers from the nether hells. Azaril spoke of the gifts. How successful the ritual was, I don't know. I just know that I couldn't watch Azaril surrender seven newborns to some demon at the cost of their mother's lives. And next you're going to tell me that these other five children are my siblings too. Septuplets, all born on the same day from the same mother. Chiron, Calandra is not your sister. I have a few more questions. Tell me more about my birth. The ritual lasted for several hours. I had to wait until the Borberadians had used all of their magical powers. Otherwise, I wouldn't have had a chance. Did you see the demon? Yes. That was the moment I knew I had to act. I lifted Calandra out of the summoning circle and took her hostage. Calandra's death would have caused the ritual to fail completely. With my knife at Calandra's throat, I forced Azaril to free your mother. You were not born yet. Azaril's astral energy was exhausted as well. She raged, but had to let us go. I fled south with you, away from the massives of the Black Sickle. Your mother was very weak. You were born on the Wall of Death. But your mother died in childbirth. So there I stood with two children in my arms, and I finally had a purpose. And what was supposed to happen after the wedding? Sooner or later, the church would have sent Falk somewhere else. Calandra would have gone with him. And I would have stayed in Warunk and protected you from Azaril's revenge for the rest of my life. That was your plan, wasn't it? I wanted to save your souls. I can only hope that you will understand that one day. Did you want to marry Calandra off to separate her from me? I did. I hoped that your gifts would never wake up if you were separated. Azrael stated repeatedly that the gifts strove together. I was sure from the start that this would confuse the feelings of those bearing the gifts. I've also seen the way Calandra has looked at you the last few moons. You are no longer children. It was only a matter of time before you... Well, you know. And that's why the lie about us being siblings. You didn't just want to prevent us from mixing our blood. Even kissing could have been dangerous. And a heroic Rondrian bridegroom could have held Calandra in check if necessary, even with her powerful demonic gifts. At least he could have saved her soul if she were to succumb to demonic temptation. Heard you're having elf trouble. Pointed ears bring good money in Wurunk. Oh, you damn fool! It really is you! Come to me! You are more beautiful than ever. Oh, the armor. 
Don't worry, it has nothing to do with the gift. Or, not directly. It's a symbol. For my people. You have people? Some would even call it a retinue. But we haven't caught Azrael yet. We'll leave her for last. Calandra, what's going on here? Revolution, Chiron. The end of the old, the beginning of liberation. I'm so glad you're here. Together we will prevail. Zulgaroth's gifts will not succeed in dividing us. The need to kill. Azeril's plan to use us to create the first paladin. You know about it. Azeril taught me a lot, more than was good for her. I had to do terrible things for her. Yet she instructed me in demonology, in blood magic and in the teachings of Saint Warbarad. The truth stands above everything. The fact that we are free and that we can even overcome gods and archdemons if our will is strong enough. Every human a mage. Imagine how the world might look if Borborad's promise were to come true. Total freedom. Oh, what a wonderful world that would be. We could all be like Azrael, sacrificing virgins, kidnapping young women, and forcing demonic powers upon innocent children whenever we want. That was Azrael's first mistake. Her second mistake was that she wanted to force me to worship Borborad, and I feared that would cost me my soul for all eternity. But her third mistake will be her downfall. Every believer must promise his soul to Borborad, they thereby enter into a pact with a demon, probably Amazeroth, the deceiver. The pact is needed to learn blood magic, but there is a way to break it. Azeril knows it, and she keeps it secret, and it gives her power over Borborad's disciples. But this knowledge is every man's right, every human a mage. Never again should anyone have to sell their soul to a demon for that promise. That's what we're fighting for. We've changed. The gifts have made us stronger. And they have become even more powerful. Eventually they will dominate us. We will not kill one another, Chiron. We will be stronger, simply because we must. My gift has become very powerful. Zulgaroth seems to see me as some sort of murder weapon. How has your gift developed? Remember that portal in Moloch Mountain? My gift let me open it. Since then I've learned much about magic, about demons and portals. Large portals. Powerful portals to other spheres. I can open them and pass through them. Once Zeran led the Borboradians, he called himself Portifex Maximus, the greatest portal opener. That is now my calling. Then you could just transport yourself into Azrael's headquarters. Unfortunately, no. The Sanctum is protected from my portals, probably also part of her contract with Zilgaroth. Borborad's dogma, what are its exact words? As Alvaranian of the Forbidden Knowledge, Borborad is revered by those who refuse to be forbidden to think. His ideal is freedom, but only a strong mind will attain complete freedom. And a strong mind comes only from a strong will. And there are no limits to this ideal of freedom. Your freedom ends where your will ends, and your will opens the forbidden gates. Who passes those gates can achieve anything. You mean blood magic, spells with your own blood or with the blood of others. In the name of justice, the old gods distributed magic completely arbitrarily. Borborad's spells make people more equal and encourages them to fight constantly. Our gift's a prime example. The law of the world, the eternal struggle, only through it is their development. Only through it does each give their best. Three awakened had to die for my gift to grow. Is what Azaril says true? That we're the last two? We are. My gift had to grow as well. And their souls? Zulgaroth will have claimed them. The price of your and my power. They were our brothers and sisters. At least some of them. That doesn't matter. Not for you and me either, my love. Morality is what we declare to be true. Father never understood that. 
You're right. I know. I summoned Zulgaroth. Cassio revealed his true name to me. So, Cassio, I see. And you're the one who was victorious in your struggle. Or did she reveal the true name out of the milk of human kindness? She died so that I would not have to fight you. For an end to the awakened struggle. The true name was part of that plan. Ah, uh, that was truly noble of her. Did, did the plan succeed? Zulgaroth told me that there are seven seals in this monastery. I must destroy them all to break his pact with Azrael. Then we will no longer have to kill each other. We'll be able to share our gifts as we please. The seals! I knew it! This is the answer! Chiron, I have to speak with Segal. Who? Where? Why? I I'll explain that all later. Hey, that's a little fast. I love you, Chiron, but this is really important. Please be patient and look around my camp a little. The next attack by Azrael's people will come soon. Maybe you can help us to secure the outpost. My people will adore you once they've seen you fight. We'll meet back here when you're done. I'll see you soon, Chiron. Good work. With the portals, I mean. You disappeared very quickly earlier. Sorry, I suspected that the seals have a greater significance. That's why Segal wanted to bind the Catechism to them. From seven souls shall the first paladin arise. I've heard of this first paladin before, but Segal? Catechism? What are you talking about? Segal has been following St. Borborad for many years, and no one knows Zulgaroth's gifts as well as he. Segal is... Well... Chiron. Segal is our real father. Father and his lies. He can be happy that Azrael kidnapped him. Calm down. The man who raised us is here. At the moment, Azrael still has him, but my people will find him. I can't wait that long. I'll find him myself. The Catechism is more important right now. This book. Take it with you when you break the seals. Six seals can be found in the monastery. The seventh, the Seal of Anointing, is in Azrael's headquarters. Calandra, what is the meaning of all this? My people believe in me. They follow Borborad's teachings, and me. They consider me Borborad's successor. Be precise. The revolution. This is not just about the souls of a few cultists, Chiron. We're founding a new church. A new church, the two of us at the top, free of Azrael, free of the need to kill, it sounds... really good. I knew you would say that, and that's what I want you to decide for me. The new church of Borborad should be your work too. Segal says that each seal will force you to make a decision. Whatever you decide will appear in this book. When you're done, this book will become the foundation of our new church. That's a lot of responsibility you're handing me. Many good men have died for this book. I don't know anyone I would trust it to more than you. Go to Segal. Talk to him. He can tell you more about the seals. And even if, in the end, you decide that the book must be burned, I will accept that. That I promise you with all my love. Chiron, my people have found the man who raised us. We know now in which torture chamber Azaril holds him captive. You can't beat good people. Maybe I underestimated your rebels. What is yours is also mine, beloved. And his rescue will make you happy. Let's get going. Or do you have any more questions first? What father must have endured? Let's hope that they only questioned him. If there's anything Azrael wants to know about Father, then at best it's how much pain he can endure. It must be something personal. Segal has hinted that. But we had best ask him ourselves. A torture chamber in a monastery. Now that is unusual. 
This isn't a monastery in which people only eat, sleep, and pray. Here, men and women search for truth and freedom. Both are paid for in blood. What did you expect? Forget it. My people will distract Azrael's guards in the Western Arcade. In the meantime, you take the Eastern Corridor. Got it? Got it. We'll get farther out of there. When you find him, give him this potion. If he was tortured, it'll relieve his pain. Here goes. Let's break Father's chains. I have another one. Same as with my leg. I heard you fighting and casting spells. You've really practiced since my last lesson. Chiron, I'm glad you're the one who came to get me. Father, it's nice to see you again. What do you want? To show your generosity and welcome me as one of your religious warriors? We offer you our help, old man. Take it or leave it. She showed me, Calandra. You have become Sigal's daughter. Your gift makes you Azaril's creature, and a tool of the demon. The two of us saved you. Without her, you might not have had any eyes or legs left. Then at least I wouldn't have to see this. I won't stand for this any longer! Chiron, bring this old fool to our camp! Maybe there he'll listen to reason! Take this for the pain. Thank you, my son. What did Azaril want from you? Did she take your eye just for revenge? First she said I should see clearly. She described to me how greedily Calandra had absorbed her lessons, and how she began to accept Sigal as her father. Then she said that all knowledge has its price, and that the price must be commensurate. Then she took my eye. So much vengefulness after all these years. There's one thing I never told you. I was too ashamed. Azaril and I were once lovers. What? I left the clover for her, my friends Fergalosh and Perel. Even back then she worshipped Borborat. I didn't care. I loved her. But she never really opened up to me. She always backed away at the last second. I thought she was playing with me, that she wanted to challenge me. But with every step that I followed her, she withdrew from me still further. Before my love, she fled ever deeper into Borboradianism. Finally, she used Segal to get rid of me. Maybe she thought she had no choice. Did she take Segal as her lover? Worse. She used the ritual in which your gifts were created. She had us take part in a great competition whose prize she kept secret. She said it was to find out who amongst us was the best. I thought it was for her love. But when Sigal and I finally faced one another, she revealed the truth. The final battle between him and me never took place. And instead? Seven children from seven virgins. Someone had to sire them. Sigel and I obeyed. It was only later I realized that she had thereby rejected me once and for all. That realization led me to steal you. And now, she has taken her revenge for it. Chiron, get me out of here. I can't go on any longer. Don't worry, Father. Chiron, good thing I found you. Azaril is attacking again, more violently than ever before. She's retaliating for Father's liberation. Whatever the reason, we don't have time. We have to defend the camp. My people are badly injured. A scout reported that Azaril will send new troops this way. Troops she rose magically. 
but the scout died before he could describe them. I'll pull my people together on the other side of the camp. Maybe we can hold the eastern gate this way. Things must be busy if you left the camp to fetch me. She has enough creatures and cultists to storm the gates of Warrenk itself. She means business. Hasn't Azaril already lost enough power? She is weakened, but so are we. It's as if she has to prove something to herself. Maybe to you or father. Stop that crap. So I will expect these new troops here. Alone. I... I don't want to abandon you, but I can split up my troops. And if there's anyone who has a chance to defend the Western Gate, then it's you. Please, Chiron. You are our last hope. If you want me dead, just say it. You mean I'm going to let others do the dirty work for me? Surrender to the force of the gift, but without fighting against you? No, Chiron. My love is stronger. Take my two bodyguards. They shall help you in this battle. We will defend the Eastern Gate without them. Somehow. Here we go. We held them off. Thank you, Chiron. A thousand thanks. So many dead. But they bought us some time. They knew the risk. And they died for a good cause. Thank you for standing by me. I... I wish it were easier for us. But that's immaterial. The survivors have little hope of defending our camp. Or storming Azaril's camp. Do you realize what that means, Chiron? It's not the first time we've stood with our backs to the wall. We'll figure something out. How great is the loss, exactly? We're still counting. There may be enough for a new church, but not an attack. At least Aegis and Solus are still alive. They stood in for my bodyguards in an honorable way. At least my life was saved by them. At a high price. Lizardmen. Seems blood mages and creatures from the Netherhells aren't enough. Azaril's people controlled them the way they did the demons, and they looked just like the stone statues in the barricade room. As if she had awakened them from the stone. Maybe we can use that. There's a card we haven't played yet. Segal. You think his knowledge could save us? I will go see him. He will help us. Good. Go see him. Azaril herself guards the very last seal in the monastery's inner sanctum. Even my gift cannot get us there. The only way in is by force. The camp will remain a safe haven for you. In the meantime, I'll pull everyone together who can still stand. But when we fight this battle, it will be the most violent of them all. I... See you've decided for the awakened, for the truth, and for me. We've waited long enough, Chiron. The night before the final battle will be ours. Come. I want you here on the ground. The whole damn monastery should hear us. My entire body longs for you. Take me, now! We'll gasp with lust and pain. Our kisses will be bites. This day you will scream my name. Now come. They loved one another. All night long, their bodies demanded more, more, and still more. When they awoke from the rapture into which they had plunged themselves with such fervor, the pillows were drenched with sweat, and their naked bodies bore scratches and bites. On the day of the great storm, Chiron and Calandra met as vibrantly as they did breathlessly. They knew that Zulgarov's gifts had played a role that night. 
and that they could not think of true love as long as Azrael commanded their souls and the demonic fever commanded their very actions. The struggle of the awakened had to end. The splinters, do you have them? Yes. An army of lizards. Once the crystal is whole again, they will overrun Azarill's people. Good. At least I can count on you in battle. What's that supposed to mean? You even need ask. I was weak, and you took advantage of it. What? You're so selfish. You talk about us freeing ourselves of the gift's compulsion, and as soon as you get the chance, you make me its whore. It sounded a little different when you were sitting on me. I should kill you, here and now. Try it. We have a battle to fight. Everything else will have to wait. At your service, noble lady. With joy I remain forever your knight in shining armor. A fool is what you are, and a damned handsome one at that. You fools! What have you done? Silence, Azarel. Your days of seducing people are over. You are defeated, Azarel. My people are already deciphering your secret of the pact. And the power you wanted to use to make us your tools. That power will now bring freedom to the world. Calandra, please listen to me one last time. The seals are broken. You have unleashed Zulgaroth's power! Shut up, demon whore! No one believes your lies now. The era of the High Prophetess has ended. The new church will lead the world into a shining new future. Kalandra, what's going on here? This battle cost us much, yet my troops are far from exhausted. The portal will take me into Moloch Mountain, the place of our awakening. From there shall the storm defeat the storm. Girl, that is madness! You do not know what you're doing! I am the greatest opener of portals, Portifex Maxima! The next portal will deliver my army to the continent. From Razazor's golden throne will I set the demons on one another until not a single one wonders the face of Aventuria! Calandra, you are not yourself! Minions of the Heptarch, servants of the Twelve Gods, hirelings of some prince! Countless names for those who are able to hunt and enslave us far too long! But with the seals did that bondage also break! Chiron, let us break the chains of tyranny! We are the power and the will to return the people to their freedom! We are Barbaradians! I believe in the freedom Barbarad promised, but not that we can impose it on the people. We will become tyrants ourselves. You had the sacred task of breaking the seals. We wanted to establish the new church together. What you are planning is madness! Not even you can control the demon hordes you want to call. Whose side are you on? Calandra, I will follow you anywhere, but not into this war. Whoever is not with me is against me. You pass judgment on Azarim. I expect you in Moloch Mountain. And so Chiron left the monastery. His victory over Azaril complete. First did the demon Zulgaroth turn her own pact against her, and then did she prove to be no match for those she had used as tools. Borborad's church would survive, and the faithful would spread the new doctrine. The doctrine Chiron had conceived in the course of his bizarre visions in the monastery. 
Azaril's death had become meaningless, superfluous. In Zulgaroth, she and Chiron now had a common enemy. An enemy that knew how to use Calandra's ambition and her gift to open a gate into the realm of men. Chiron returned to Moloch Mountain in the company of the man he considered his father. Here the lovers would meet again. Here the final decision about Borborad's paladin would be made. Welcome, Lord. Welcome to the Limbus. Let her go. Calandra's soul was never part of our deal. <laughs> Silence, mortal. I gifted you richly for your services. We are even. The girl fulfills the destiny I gave her when she was born. Borborad, or whomever she has thrown it away on, may have her soul. But your purpose is already fulfilled. I shall pass through her guilt into the next era, and your world will accompany me. He is weakened. Quick! We must close the gate! All right. I'll take your gift. Hold still. Calandra, wait. It's all my fault. I let myself be seduced. Don't stop me from making amends. You want to be the first paladin? Sacrifice yourself to throw Zulgaroth back. Chiron, I know you don't want me to sacrifice myself. You love me. You... you seem to be so certain. I had the courage to kiss you back then. That made you happy. You stood by me back when we told Father. I'm certain you never betrayed me on your quest. In Clawmore, before Gamut. And even if you may have kissed another girl. It doesn't matter to me. I know Cassio is an expert seductress, but you never shared your bed with her. I knew it before you said it. You did that all for me. That, when the fact that you never ceased to follow me would have been proof enough. It wasn't all suffering. You're being much too modest, Kyrie. When we met again in the monastery, we both felt it. But that was only the first reunion. You understood my new faith. You have defended me in front of Father. When the situation was completely hopeless, you encouraged me. Showed me that the casualties of the revolution were not in vain. Stop, please. You're making the decision even more difficult for the both of us. Chiron, your love is so pure that it shames me. Calandra, stop it, please. There's something I don't understand. Why did you have Solus attack me? He attacked you? You? Oh, that fool. He had orders to keep me free from interference. I should have known that he would deliberately misunderstand that command. I'm sorry, Chiron. Calandra? It was a lie. It was all a lie. I was only after the gift, nothing else. All you wanted was my gift. If only you hadn't been so stupid. If only you hadn't opened that damned gate. Now you must destroy the power of the first paladin, and yourself with it. It was all pointless. All of it. And now you die. 
Chiron, that. No. No, Chiron. I can't believe that. Nothing was pointless. I will destroy the gift and the paladin with it. Because I love you in spite of everything, I will take this burden from you. Maybe it will make you happy. Something I can't be. And now... Goodbye, my love. <laughs> I see you've decided for your father, for our past, and for me. We've waited long enough, Chiron. The night before the final battle will be ours. Come. Calandra, that's your gift speaking. I want you, but all I would get would be your gift. We are one. It helps me when I'm shy. And I don't want to be shy any longer. Calandra, wake up! Chiron? I... What was that? It's over, Calandra. You... We were stronger than the gift. Chiron, it's destroying our love. It has to stop. It just has to stop. Tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll put an end to it. Chiron had long wondered how that which began with a gentle kiss would end. Countless nights had he longed for this moment and for Calandra. Their hearts trembled. And their bodies, which had craved closeness and tenderness for so very long, pressed together greedily. But they knew that Zulgaroth's gift had changed them, and that the demonic passion could destroy their love at any time. Though Azuril might command their souls, their hearts belonged to them alone. And they would give them only when the last battle had been fought, when the awakened struggle had come to an end. The Splinters, do you have them? Yes. An army of lizards. Once the crystal is whole again, they will overrun Azaril's people. Good. I knew I could count on you. At your service, noble lady. With joy, I remain forever your knight in shining armor. A fool is what you are, and a damned handsome one at that. Enough play. We still have one last battle ahead of us. We've resisted the gift together, and together we will achieve everything we want. Azaril will fall, and we... We will prevail. And so their words awaken stone to life. The Bard should have a story to tell. I'll put the crystal back together. Take this. It will protect you in battle. Thank you, Milady Commander. And Chiron. Yes? I love you. Never forget that. He is weakened. Quick! We must close the gate! All right. I'll take your gift. Hold still. Calandra, wait. It's all my fault. I let myself be seduced. Don't stop me from making amends. You want to be the first paladin? Sacrifice yourself to throw Zulgaroth back. Chiron, I know you don't want me to sacrifice myself. You love me.
You... you seem to be so certain. I had the courage to kiss you back then. That made you happy. You stood by me back when we told Father. I'm certain you never betrayed me on your quest. In Clawmore, before Gamut. And even if you may have kissed another girl. It doesn't matter to me. I know Cassio is an expert seductress, but you never shared your bed with her. I knew it before you said it. You did that all for me. That, when the fact that you never ceased to follow me would have been proof enough. It wasn't all suffering, you know. You're being much too modest, Chiron. When we met again in the monastery, we both felt it. But that was only the first reunion. You understood my new faith. You have defended me in front of Father. When the situation was completely hopeless, you encouraged me. Showed me that the casualties of the revolution were not in vain. Stop, please. You're making the decision even more difficult for the both of us. Chiron, your love is so pure that it shames me. Calandra, stop it, please. There's something I don't understand. Why did you have Solace attack me? He attacked you? You? Oh, that fool. He had orders to keep me free from interference. I should have known that he would deliberately misunderstand that command. I'm sorry, Kyron. It's time for a decision. I will take your gift, and you will live on. You really want to give me this greatest of all gifts? We don't know what will happen when the first paladin arises. Maybe I'll survive. We've had a lot of bad luck up till now. Time to change that. You... Oh, you're a fool. Farewell, Chiron. I will always love you. Always. Thank <laughs> you.